Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today we will talk about modules decoupling. Before we begin, as you can see, 2017 is about to end. So happy new year to everyone! Thank you for your support, it really means a lot to me. And now back to modules decoupling. So let's imagine we have an application. It can be a web application, smartphone application, or even a backend server. Also, let's imagine it's not a small application. It's not like a hello world or a to-do app that everyone does these days as a hello world. It contains a lot of logic and it is probably separated into more than one module. In many cases, you want those modules to be communicating with each other, passing some data from one module to another and passing commands. One way of doing it is making one module aware of another module. And let's see by example. We have a users module. It manages user accounts and it manages user details, meaning that it is responsible for the logging of the user, switching accounts, and when the user is logged in, it is responsible for holding and giving us the user details, the specific logged in user details. Also, we have a movies library module. Its responsibility is to manage the library of the user. Okay, the user can have multiple movies libraries, his favorite movies, his movies he doesn't like, movies by category, and so on. This is the responsibility of the movies library module. And we have a movies suggestion module whose responsibility is to suggest movies to the user by the movies he liked. It can be a machine learning algorithm that looks at the movies the user likes and suggests movies that the user well, probably will like. As you can see, these two modules, they rely on the logged in user. They show the movies of the users, the libraries of the movies of the user, and suggest movies to the specific user. So basically you can think that they, they rely on the user's module. They need to know the user details. And every time an account changes, they should be updated. Their data should be updated. So one way to think about it is to create a dependency from this module to the user's module and from this module to the user's module as well and to manage the library of the user by user details and the suggestions also by user details and to listen to account changes and update the libraries or the suggestions. This is one way of doing it. The problem with this way is that you couple those two modules with the user's module. And when you want to eliminate this module or replace it with some different uh, module that implements other account management, you're kind of in a problem. For example, if you want to be able to, to manage accounts differently, for example, accounts of users that uh, signed in using Google Plus or Facebook or simply your, uh, their email, maybe you want to be able to separate those modules into different modules and now you need to create a level of abstraction which is not always an easy way to do above those modules and you will be able you will need to create a coupling between those two modules and the user's module but let's look a little bit closer at what those two modules really need to know all they need to know, all the information they really need are the user, the sign-in user and a notification about changes to the user. Let's think about these two things as a state object, as a state object of our application. In this example, the state contains the signed-in user, the user with which the, our application interacts and in case user switches accounts we will need to, to know that our state changed. Other things that might be in this state object in our case is for example the current movie the user is watching or reading details of or the current trailer that the user is watching and uh, his reaction to that uh, trailer and uh, 
uh, I don't know, the current page the user is looking in our app and the details of that page, like for example, the current search of the user, like the words he typed to look for a movie by the name. You can think of a state as an object, a composite object of small objects uh, that all together they compose the state of our application. The current user that is logged in, the current page, the current search words that the user uh, typed, and the current uh, movie the user showed, these are all objects, simple plain data objects that represent the state of our application and the changed event can simply, uh, can simply notify us when this state, this application state changed. When this event is raised, other modules can subscribe to it and react. For example, when the user's module logs in a user, he can put the user inside the state object. Or for example, if the user's module is responsible for switching an account and the user changes an account and now the user's module updates the state with a different kind of user. This way, the state object is raising an event. It says, hey, listen, I've changed. <clears throat> and everyone can be subscribed to this event. And when the state is changed, they can react to it. <clears throat> so for example, the movies library module, it can react to the change of the state of the user, the signed in user, and it can see if the user, the logged in user changed, now it will reload its data and will show uh, and load the different kind of library uh, by this new user account. The same thing with the movie suggestion module, it can look at the state and see if the state changed and the user is actually changed, well, we will update the suggestions. Also, okay, also if we, for example, will have a movie, okay, a movie object, which is responsible for a single movie, I don't know, for showing its trailer, for, uh, for running the movie itself, and for man managing the uh, the data of that movie regarding to that user, for example. I, I'm not sure that I will put it there, but for example, let's assume it is. If the user likes this movie, it can update the state of, I don't know, the movies, the likes of, the, uh, of, the, of that specific user, a list of movies that the user likes, or simply state that uh, that the number of movies uh, that the user likes changed and this way the state is changing and the suggestion module now when he sees that uh, another movie was added to the likes list or the number of movies that the user liked has changed it will react and load those movies that the user liked it will recalculate the suggestions and will show different number of suggestions different types of suggestions and the libraries movie the movies libraries module he can react to it and load the new liked movie to the liked playlist now let's look at what we've achieved here all these modules they are not aware of other modules we can simply detach one or more modules from our application and the whole application well it will be affected by the features of that application, but it will still work. Nothing will break. The only thing we are coupled with is the state object, which can be a plain, simple object of nested object or list of objects and a notification about those changes to those objects. That's it. That's the only, you can separate it to an only module. And this is the only module that other modules need to know about. They don't need to know about other modules in the application and you can even detach the user's module and insert another module which will, I will call a development module which always puts uh, some mocked user data for the development team to work with 
and to manipulate and see how the application reacts to those changes. They can simply, without even an existing user, they can simply uh, mock the logged in user with all the data it, it knows and see how other modules will react to it. I always think uh, about this kind of designs as a state-driven application. What I mean by this? I mean that everything that happens in the application is driven by the state of the application. Every module that wants to, to change something in the application, it doesn't do it by itself, it's supposed to change the state, and when the state is changed, other modules will take the change and update the, their data according to that change. So nothing is changed, like there is no communication from module to module directly. There is no, almost none of changes that keep those changes only inside that module. Most of the changes will be propagated to the user state, to the application state, I'm sorry. And this application state will update other modules that rely on that state. This also makes a very, very simple uh, explanation of how the data flow in, the, in our application works. The data itself always flows from the state towards the modules and a, an action is always flows from the module to the state. Okay, if some kind of action wants to be performed, the module performs this operation on the state, updates the state, and after that has happened, after the state is changed, all the changes, all the data flows from the state to other modules. So if you manage to create this kind of architecture in our application, it will be very, very, very uh, sturdy and very simple to understand what happens and what changes uh, to the state will, will be affecting what kind of modules. You have watched an episode about modules decoupled. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more architecture videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more Kotlin related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. Happy New Year and see you later on Programmarist.